So first, uh, several things. Uh, uh, first, remember to finish your homework three on time. And that the due date is the, the November 26. And the second, so uh, many of you already sent me your team information, but uh, some uh, team has not sent me your potential topic, and, uh, your team members yet, so please remember send me those information. Okay. And uh, uh, second thing is that, so according to our current progress, so I predict that uh, it is likely that we we are not have the, the in class presentation for your final project. So that that, that is kind of my prediction for that. But it may change, and so, but but according to the current schedule, so because we still need some lectures to cover the part three for the. Uh, Domain specific hardware uh, computer architecture. For the, uh, more specifically, for the AI, uh, AI specific hardware architecture, computer architecture. So, in the several uh, <coughs> classes to cover that. So, it is probably that we will, we don't have the, the enough lecture in class lecture. To, to let you present <clears throat> to let you to present your final project. So in that case, so you will you will still need to uh, submit your report. But so maybe no need to prepare the slides for that. But so so we will see. So what is going on in the early December? Any questions? Okay. So now let's continue. So this is where we were last Friday and uh, So we uh, talked about the one bit <coughs> uh, Predictor and the two bit predictor. Okay. So I have I have one general question. So, what is the, the benefits as compared to the one bit predictor? What is the benefit and the disadvantage of two bit predictor? Again, what is the pros and cons for this solution? What is the advantage and the disadvantage of the, the two bit predictors compared to the one bit predictor? Okay, better prediction accuracy. And what is drawback?
So what is the drawback of the two bit? Typically, there's no free launch here. Something is uh, more effort to predict. So here, how do you define the effort? I think it's like if there is, it will take more uh, wrong, like wrong predictions to kind of change the prediction in a two bit counter. As compared to one bit. That's what I thought of. I think uh, as in terms of efforts. Okay, so because you, you mean that because we have the like the two states, two states that the strong like strong taken, strong taken, weakly taken. So, uh, if it's a uh, original is in the strongly taken and uh, but uh, there's a sequence. Uh, not actually non taken. So let me let me to take. <laughs> more cycle to jump to the predict taken status. So that is what you mean? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that is true for some cases, but when we think about the overall workload, because yes, for for, for, uh, for, for some uh, pattern of the, your workload, yeah, it's just like, that one, that particular one, yes. So the, your this two bit uh, predictor is not good at that. But for other workload, just like something like this, something like this. The one bit is very bad. So overall, so regarding the accuracy, so the two bit still performs better than the one bit. Yeah. What I mean, that's the overall accuracy. So any other, any other, Go back. So actually, this slide already showed show the pros and cons. Can, you can see here. But the drawback actually, since you use a two bit predictor, you can see it's kind of you can see, you can view this kind of two two bit saturation counter. So actually, it's kind of the, the more hard of a cost. All right. So you take a more hardware cost, but typically, so such cost is kind of the, it's not a very big deal when we consider the entire system. So in that case, so it is worthwhile to pay such costs and to gain, to trade some other cost for the accuracy. So in such scenario. So, and, and in that case, so we think that it, it is kind of the access, acceptable solution.
Is that clear? Any questions? So again, so remember that so from some perspective, so the computer architecture is kind of the, the art of the, the trade-off. So you always try to find a good balance between the two extreme case. Sometimes the balance here, sometimes the balance here. So, so it mainly depends on your application scenario. So no matter it is about the cache or it is about the like the virtual memory or like in this prediction, so predictor, we will see some more complicated predictor later. So how to properly use them? And so you always have many different choices and try to make some the trade-off. And the how to do the trade-off or how to do the balance. So we don't have like that very general uh, criteria. So because it's highly depends on application scenario. So our hardware design, it, you must as a hard, uh, as a uh, computer architecture researcher or for hardware designers, so you always need to think about the specific application scenario. So even for the same hardware, so when you consider the different scenario for the embedded or for the cloud computing, so you the trade-off will be totally different. Okay. So next, so what do we talk about is just talk about is about the one bit or two bit predictor. Okay. So notice that this type of the basic predictor, predictor they explored the last time predictability. Okay. So, but if you want to further improve the prediction quality, we can we can actually leverage more information. Leverage more information. So actually, there are two general strategies. So first, so we can based on such observations. So a branch's outcome can be correlated with other branches. So the Okay. So in that case, actually, we consider we let or we leverage the so-called global branch correlation. And the second opportunity is that a branch's outcome it can also be correlated with its own past outcome. And that means that we can leverage the opportunity of the, the local branch correlation. So the first opportunity is kind of more spatial related, spatial related, while the second one is more kind of more temporal related. But that doesn't mean that the first opportunity is only spatial related. But it's, as compared to the second, it's more kind of the spatial related. Okay, so now let's consider the first one. The global branch correlation. So let's first to take a look at some example. So for, for example, consider this one, this example. 
So if x is less than one, and then we branch to the x. Uh, sorry, branch to the y. Go to the y instruction. And if x is larger than one, we go to the x instruction. So we know that, so actually, if the first branch not taken, uh, hold on a moment. If the, the first one is taken, if the first one is taken, this one is taken, the will not the second one will not be taken, right? Is that right? So actually, so their decisions they're kind of well correlated, right? Will be logically correlated. Okay. And it's similar things here. If the, the this if statement, because it's corresponding to one branch, is it is taken. So this one will not be taken. Right? So if this is taken, if the condition is one is true, it is taken. And a equals to two. And then that means that a will not be zero. So when we executed this instruction, this this branch instruction, so we will we know that we are not taking the branch. Is that right? And also some other examples. For example, here, if this branch is not taken, that means that the condition one is not true. So we know that condition one and the condition two, it will not be true as well. So this branch will not be taken as well. So we can see that in practice, so Many cases that so whether to execute, whether to take an one branch for the current instruction, it will depend on the outcome of the previous branches. Is that right? So there exist some correlations among the different branches. So that means that because there exists a such phenomenon, so that means that that provides an opportunity and we can leverage such chance as long as that we can better extract such correlation. And then we can leverage this to perform the, the better prediction. Right. Any questions? So this is very important. So, so do you need me to explain again? For well, this kind of intuitive example, this intuitive idea. Okay. So also here, 
So if the, the branch Y is taken, branch Z is taken, so branch X will be taken, right? But if either Y and Z, that they are not big, it is not taken and then X will not be taken. So we always have some kind of correlation here among the different branches. Okay, so actually that means what? So recall that, so our previous branch predictor, actually we, once we fetch the one branch, uh, sorry, once we fetch the one instructions, and, um, and uh, so we can then use like the, the two bits predictor, one bit predictor to perform the prediction, right? So that is what we have learned, like something like here, right? So now what changes in the big picture? So now, Actually, we do not just use the current instruction. Actually, we will use the, the global branch history to perform the prediction. Actually, this is kind of two level branch predictor. Okay, so this is the key idea. So now how to do that? Actually, or the key thing that how can we extract, how can we capture such global correlation? How can we let your computer know that? Right? Actually, a key component is that we need to use the, the so-called global history register. And so, as shown in this slide, we need to use one global branch history, this global history register, together with our previous use, the two bit counter, to form a two level branch predictor. Okay. And the first level, this is the Global history register, actually it is to use it to record or to keep track of the, the global history for all the different branches, whether you taken or not taken before. And then according to this, we then assemble the previous the classical, like the two bit counter. Okay. So now, so here's an example. So the first level is like the embed global history register. And uh, so this register actually, is, it stores the information of the directions of the last M branches. 
last M branches. And no, notice that here, this branch is kind of globally, not just the current branch. And the second level, actually, that is, that is the, a counter, a two bit counter that we used before. For each, because the first level, this register, it shows one type of the history, right? One history phenomenon or one history pattern. And then the second level shows it will, for each different history pattern, so we can use one two bit counter to make this prediction. Is it clear? Any questions? Okay, maybe it's still a bit abstract, so now let's take a detailed example here. So assume that we have a, this type of the two level loop. Okay. So we know that for the four loops, so each four loop we will have a branch instruction, right? And for the EQ, just the one like Yeah, 100, then like the label one, and then for the BQ, the register two, like three, and label two, something like that. Right, and there's some of this other instruction statements here. Okay. So now for this one, actually we can use the, the Global two level global uh, branch predictor to perform predictions. Okay. Nope. I see that. So actually, so here we will have. Uh, so-called global history register. Global history register. And notice that, for example, here we, this register, we assume that it can only store like the four bits. So that means what? It can store the last of four times of the branch history, right? Notice that here is last, and branch direction. Okay. And notice that, so here this history is the global history. It's not a local history. That means that here, for example, here, like zero one one one. That means when one 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 zero. So this is the, the latest history. That means what? That means that, so we have the, the several taken for the J, right? Several taken for the J and then there's a not, and then there's a not taken for the J because we are, when J is three, we are not taken, right? We are jump out of the, the J loop, right? And then increase the I. Is that right? So we have several, several taken and then a non taken here. 
you know, so globally we will see this. We will not distinguish. So which y is i or which uh, which y is i or which zero is j or not, right? We just see this. So actually, in the different time step, we will see, you will see the different history, global history. Is that right? And now, so actually, you can use such history. One zero one 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 zero one, and then you to you have one table. This is the so called pattern history table. You have such history, and then you look up this table. This table shows the history of the, of, of the different uh, historical moment. You can do. It shows that the, our decision of the, the in the different historical moments, and such decision actually, it is executed by the two bit counter. Because we hold a belief that when we having the same history again, so typically we are likely to follow our previous decision. Right? That is the phenomenon. Okay. But we all also just exactly follow that. We sometimes things change, so actually we use a two bit counter, right? Can help us to correct that. Is that clear? So intuitively, so we know that, so if we record the global branch history, we know that, so globally you will see such pattern, right? Is that right? Globally, you will see that. And so every time you see the pattern like this, so you will know that it's likely that you will take taken this branch for the eye. Right? Is that right? Globally. And also, every time you see the, like here, 1101, actually, that is for the J. Right? You will know that it will be taken. So you can view that. So for this, the global history, right? His, history register, actually, it continues to take photo. It, can be, it continues to take a photo of the, the, your OOO. Branch hit branch decisions at the every moment that we need to do the branch decisions. It takes a many, many, many photos. And the key philosophy is that so every time once we have one photo, and then we go back. We have one every time we have the like the 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 kind of the, the snapshot of the, the current at the current moment. And then we go back to check this, the pattern history table to see whether we have the same photo before, same pattern before, right? And then we can use that because in that, in that same pattern, we will use the, the two bits 
to store some information of our pre previous prediction, right? And then we can leverage that to, pre to perform the prediction. Is that clear right now? Any questions? Or do you need me to explain again? Any questions? No questions? So if you don't have any questions, then I have a question for you. So here in this example, you can see that, so actually how we update the GR, the global register, we actually, we will left to shift it, right? We'll left to shift it. But why? Anyone here? Anyone in here? So why we need to left shift to GR or right shift to GR? The global register.
Any volunteer? To include the latest results. Can you elaborate a bit more about that? You can, you can unmute yourself. Uh, just uh, uh, whether we took or, or didn't take the last, um, uh, the the current instruction, uh, the current uh, prediction. I mean, uh, uh, can you repeat again? Uh, to include uh, to include whether we we took or or did not take the the um, the current uh, mm -hmm. prediction. So, so why we need to include that? For the next time, the next um, uh, that is correct. Because notice that the global history register, what is is stored? It is stored in the last n times branches decision, right? So for next time, your current decision become the history. Is that right? So what you are, whatever decision you make, it will become the history, right? And it will be used as the reference for the next time. Is that right? So that means that we need to continue to update your global history register. Is that right? Is that clear? And actually, then you can see that it's one factor it matters. It is the the size of your global history register, right? The size. So ideally is that we can actually, we want to remember more history as we want. Is that right? So it intends to can bring the better accuracy because we can remember a lot of things, a lot of things. But we know that there's always some trade-off. We cannot store so many bits there. Everything is not free. So how to set the value of n is also kind of a trade-off. You need to consider some trade-off. Any questions? Any questions for the global branch predictor? If no more questions, I will go to the next one. The second opportunity we can leverage, that is the local correlation. And if the local correlation, let's take a look at this example. Notice that for this specific, this loop for this branch instruction. So we know that what is pattern? So it will always be one, 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 taken, 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 not taken, 
right? And then take and take and take and no take. And then take and take and take and no take. Right? Locally. Notice that this is this is the, the sequence of this local instruction, local branch. While for this example, this is for the global when we consider the two branches. So this is this is different. So when we consider its local history, we can also see the pattern. Right? That means what? That means we can also leverage this pattern to help us to do the better prediction. Is that right? Any questions? No questions? Actually, here is the big picture. You can see that, so now as compared to this, the global branch history, so now we can see the difference that since this is the local one, we need to directly utilize your PC value. That means the address of this instruction, this branch instruction, right? Because how can we identify the local one? We need to use your program counter, your address information, in your instruction memory, right? So we know that if it is, we, if we, we know, if we encounter again for a specific local instruction, so that means when we execute that one, when we need to make the decision, the prediction for that one, it must have the same program counter. Right? So same pro program counter value, same PC value. Right? So actually that means that we first we have one table here and each entry it represent one local branch each entry represent one local branch and how we access this table we utilize the program counter the current pc address when you execute one branch instruction you have your current pc value and then we can use this pc value as address to access one specific entry of this table. All right. Any questions? So for example, for one branch, it addresses like one zero zero one, and then we can use that this you can this address to look up this table, to access its related, its local history. Well, another branch it has the PC value, but its address is one 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 zero zero, one zero one, and then this one when we execute this one, the PC value will be this, and then again we'll use this address to look up this table to find this branch's history, its local history. The different branch, they have a different history, right? We need to separately store them. So you can see this is totally different from the global one. The 
global one, you only have one register here. Because every time you will kind of refresh your history by the right shift or the left shift, right? So you don't need to consider the specific information for each local branch because we look, we put them together in an overview, in an overall view to do that. In a global view. But while for this uh, local branch, actually history, we need to specifically store their individual history entry by entry. Is that clear? Any questions? Okay. And uh, actually, that is the key idea. So, the pre per branch history register, per branch history register. You can see that this is a first level is a set of the, the local history register. And uh, select how to select that. We will use the program counter your address of the, the branch. Because each branch, once stored in the instruction memory, its address in the instru instruction memory has been fixed. Right? So that is the ID. And once you specify, according to the current PC value, specify. The branch instruction you want to predict, and then you you use the PC value to specify one, right? And then get his history, right? And then we know that use this information, history information, and then again use the two bit per, uh, the counter. And then to perform the predictions. So that the last time the same history was seen. Any questions? Oh, do you need me to re explain again? If you have any questions, you can just unmute yourself and ask me a question. This is quite quite important because for the branch predictor, this is a very important component in the modern computer architecture.
Two questions? No questions. Then I have, again, I have one question for you. Then, so what is the pros and the cons for the two level global branch prediction and the two level local branch prediction? As compared to the one bit or two bit. idea? One student said, similar to comparison between one and two bit, high accuracy at cost of more hardware. That is correct. So you can see that, so here, definitely we can use to leverage more information, more correlation, no matter globally or the locally. And then we have the better accuracy, better the penalty is that you need to build more hardware, but here you need the two level. You need to store some of the lookup table, right? Perform the such the predictor. So that is extra cost. But again, so that is worthwhile. As long as we can control the hardware cost for in a certain range, that is worthwhile to do that. And also, I, I want to also emphasize another thing that so actually, so you can view the two bit re register for, for each certain local branch, the two bit register, you can view this as kind of the, a very specialized local predictor because it only emphasize, it only focus on the, like the, the last two times. Right. Or well, the one bit of register is just a, a predictor, it's just a focus on the last time. But while for like for example, for this the local branch prediction for the for the first level, actually we can look more. Right? We broaden our vision. We look back to to see the longer history and then to help us to do the better judgment. Right. We expand our observation temporally. While for the global branch predictor, we expand our observation locally. No, sorry, spatially, both spatially and temporally. That means we include more information. for the reference when we want to make the decision. So this philosophy is very important. 
I hope that you can understand such philosophy. So that is a very general and a useful idea. And that means that, so when you, when you are able to include more information, and that means that it is probably that you can have the better decision. You know more, once you know more, you read more, and then you can have the better results. Just like writing, always you should read more books, the more papers, and know more ideas, more knowledge, and then they can help you to make a decision to write your own papers, right? Try to observe more information so you can. And that is, Similar things happen like for the more aggressive part of for the, like for the machine learning. For the machine learning, so we know that, so you should always to like to, in general, general principle that more data will be better. Some of you already took my deep learning course, or some of you may take that next spring. So, so you, you, you know, you, you will know, or you have known that. So, the scale of the, the your training data set is very important. Why? Because once your machine learning model can can learn more, can be trained on more data, and then performance typically will be better. So the underlying philosophy is is similar. So no matter it's about the computer architecture or hardware, more hardware, or it's about the the machine learning, the AI, more software. We always want to include more information to help us to make the decision, right? One student asked a question. Let me take a look at it. So, so does the, that imply that the global predictor generalized better as compared to local predictor? That's a good question. Uh, I think there's some overlap there. There's some overlap there. For example, so let's take a look at, so this is the branch global history. One, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. This is the global history, right? But then we know that like for this three one, actually it belongs to the J. Oh, sorry, uh, I think two, two, one. So, let's take here. One, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero. So, for this one, one, zero, it's belong to the J, right? And this one belongs to the I. Is that right? So, actually, you can see that you have some of the repeated pattern, local repeated pattern for the local branch, All right? So if we, at the same time, we place a local branch predictor, you will see that it's history for the, like the J is the one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, right? This is for the J. And if you have another local branch predictor history for the I, you will see that it is one 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 many many one until I have a one zero because of your eyes of one hundred right so you can see that your global history is kind of the merge of the, the different local history but I cannot directly say that the global one is kind of the more generalization this is because remember that we have the lens limit for your global register. Is that right? Actually, your global, you, you can view this kind of, this the lens is kind of the resolution. It's kind of the resolution.
or what kind of the precision, right? So actually you can only see a certain range of the history or store a certain range of the history. Globally. So I, so in that case that, so when you have the, the specific local history, branch history storage, so this can help you to perform the better prediction. Because for each local one, actually it's, it's, it has its own resolution as well. It can have the better memory or the storage of its history, right? For example, for this, especially for example, for this, the, the local I branch, so it has the one, 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 for it can store the more if history of the I, but for if we, if you are global predictor, uh, history is just have the four bit, so it can only store the one uh, history mo historical moment for the eye. But actually, that is, information is kind of not sufficient. Is that right? Do I answer your question? Any other questions? Okay, so actually, so that's the reason typically we can use them together. Some branches more predictable using local history, some branches more predictable using global ones, so we can merge them together. Actually, we can use the heterogeneous predictor. And uh, for example, this is the, the one real world predictor. You can see that to use the both the a real world processor. It, so it's the structure for the branch predictor. It's used both the global predictor and the local predictor. Then work them together. So one last thing is about, so we already ran of time. So, okay, so we, we will leave it for the next, for this Friday's class and then officially finish. It's about, so that's just about the, actually since the prediction, it is kind of the, you cannot mathematically model that. We can also use like use the AI model, like the neural work to do that. This is not a new idea. This actually is an old idea. This figure is cited from some of the paper in the, at least two or 10 or 20 years ago. And now, so people are rethinking this idea. Just the, that is the AI for the computer architecture. We will roughly talk about that next class and then we will uh, move to the, the next lecture. The, uh, VIW and the super scalar. Okay, so that is end of our today's class. So again, I apologize so for uh, for my problem that to make this today's class begin later. And uh, thank you for waiting for me. Thank you so much. And uh, so I will have my office hour right now. So I will not. Uh, oh, but I still need to first exit the room because I need to first to finish the uh, the recording and then. I, re-enter the room again. So if you have any questions in my office hour, so, so you can come to the room. So thank you again. So have a great day. See you this Friday.